How's it going everybody? Welcome back to Mojo Group Mike here. Today we're going to check out one of the most economical airplanes you can get your hands on. At least by pilot standards. Stay tuned, we're checking out the Mooney M20. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the most requested airplanes in front of me here is the Mooney M20. If you are a pilot or you are just an airplane fanatic, you'd know about Mooney's. And this company or this, this brand has gone through so much in the last couple of decades, but it's unfortunate because they've built a lot of amazing airplanes, more particularly this model here, the M20. Uh, especially if you're a first time pilot or you're a first time owner, this is definitely an airplane that you are looking at. I know for one that a few years ago, this was one of the airplanes that I was looking at. And being a beginner pilot, especially if you have low time, you may be intimidated by the complexity of this airplane because it does have retractable landing gear. But the retractable landing gear is manually controlled. You basically push a bar and pull a bar up and down. So it's nothing crazy. But what this airplane is well known for is one, it's economical on the fuel burn and it is fast. Okay, a little bit of history. The first M20 was certified back in 1955. And that airplane actually used a much smaller engine, 150 horsepower. But what people were excited about was that this airplane was able to achieve 170 miles per hour with only 150 horsepower. And so there's been several modifications to the plane over the years. And this particular one is a 1984 model, uses a Lycoming engine, but a 200 horsepower engine that gives you economical cruise speeds, climb rate, and fuel burn. And what that is paired with is this constant speed propeller, which will see the lever in the interior. So again, you have a Lycoming engine and you have a constant speed three blader propeller here from McCulley. McCulley is a, is a well-known brand when it comes to props and you find a lot of these even in Cherokees and Cessnas. And if you look at the wings of the Mooney here, you can see in proportion to the fuselage, it's not a crazy long wing. Um, and in each wing, you have 32 gallons of fuel. So total fuel you have for this plane is 64 gallons. I'm not sure how much of that is usable, but let's just say you have roughly 60 gallons of fuel that you can fly with. And something that's unique, well, maybe not unique to the Mooney, is that you have a fuel gauge right here on the outside of the airplane. So you have that on both wings, and also you do have an engine monitor uh, in the cabin as well. Now, let me step back a little bit because I want to share my personal opinion about this airplane. Physically, I have a preference for low wing airplanes. I just think they look better than high wing. Now, you do have benefits of flying a low wing and a high wing depending on you know who you are, what age, and whatever physical abilities or disabilities you have. One thing I do know is that for high wings, it's much easier to get in and out of the airplane. And what you see with the Mooney is the fact that this airplane is actually much lower to the ground. So even if you look at the struts for the wheels, you can see just how short they are. You see the nose wheel there, and these have amazing shock absorbers. So you see the spring, for example, on that, uh, from the pilot that flies this airplane, he tells me that it's really a cushion whenever you land this airplane. Although, the nose wheel there, you have to be careful. Uh, you may have read some stories of pilots having pop strikes with that nose wheel. So, from what I've been told, if you are to bounce this thing twice or more, you are vulnerable to having a pop strike in this airplane. But something you do notice is the you see like, an incline to the body of the airplane. You see it's much lower back there and then the nose comes up. But either way, because of the height to the ground, you do have to be careful not to bounce around on your landing with the Mooney. And so I would say, you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I think the airplane looks great, smooth edges here. Now you look back here, this usually is a baggage compartment door, but that's not what that is in the Mooney. Right here you have an opening and this is to create access to be able to charge the battery, which is pretty neat. Now, to put baggage in this airplane, uh, you do have to go through that one door, which I'll go on the other side. 
but while I'm back here one thing that is unique to the Mooney one is this tail you can see the vertical stabilizer here how it kind of bends in a little bit but the trim tab on this airplane also is for the entire empennage literally your vertical horizontal your rudders and elevators are trimmed at the same time which is it's not something that i'm used to uh, but i think it's a pretty neat feature now let's get in that cabin and speaking of the baggage door sorry here we have it i lied so you don't have to go through there to to put in your baggage you do have a door here uh, that makes it easy and as i said you have up to 120 pounds now let me tell you what I personally like about the Mooney. You can see here how low this thing is to the ground. Again, it does have its benefits. It's so easy to step up. So to step in the airplane, one foot here, there's a handle here for you to pull yourself up and just put your foot right here. And then you step into the aircraft. Again, you do have this one door. But something that's really neat about this model, this particular airplane is, I mean, look at this interior. Very, very nicely done. Uh, this is one of the neatest interiors I've seen for an airplane that's over 30 years old. Very neat. You can see upgraded leather interior. I don't even see any scratches or wear and tear in this plane. And this airplane actually is a club airplane, which I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, with this video. So let's look at the panel first. You can see some upgrades here. You do have your standard six pack, but if you come to the right, you see they did upgrade with some glass here. You have the GNS 430 from Garmin, and here you have an autopilot. So this airplane is certified for instrument flying. And this here, I'm not sure what the name of this device is, but this is your engine monitor. So you do have a digital reading for what's happening with the engine. And then you've got your radios here. And all the way to the right, circle breakers, which you'll see in most airplanes. Now, ergonomically, you see you have your standard yoke in this plane. You have your rudder pedals there. One thing I, I personally think is a downside to the Mooney, and I'll get in a little bit, is this cabin space. This is a very narrow airplane. So you can see, you although you have four seats, and the pilot who flew this plane is about the same height as me. So if you're between 5'9 to 6 feet, I would consider you average size, right? But look, at that height, you would have to push this chair all the way back. And what that means is... There's really no leg room in the back, guys. So you can't really sit anybody back here whenever you're flying. So I always say that the Mooney is more of a two-seater airplane. You may be able to take three people um, and maybe a baby. But other than that, this is not a typical, or this is not a real four-seater airplane. I'll get in to show you what I mean. So guys, here I am in the Mooney M20. As you can see here, like I said, one of the downsides, in my opinion, is just the, the width of this cabin. So if you see me right now, I'm pretty average size and height wise, I'm 5'10". I do have a good amount of headroom uh, once I sit down. But I imagine if you are a bigger person or a taller person, it might get a little cozy in here. Now, in terms of my leg room, and I'll show you right now, let me turn the camera around. If you look at my leg room here, actually this chair is maybe pulled all the way back for me. I would probably have to pull up a little bit to be able to get to those rudders, but you've got room for your leg room for days, uh, which is nice. So some things I didn't show earlier with the cockpit. So you have your three main control levers here. This is very standard for a legacy airplane. It's a push and pull. You have your throttle here and you have your uh, prop control here. Again, this is a constant speed prop and then you have your fuel mixture here. Um, and if you go further down, you do have some or one or two electronic switches, but most of your electric switches are right here uh, where the pilot is sitting for the most part. I do notice a nice uh, uh, pad for your foot there but there's nothing here but i imagine oops let me see if i can get it 
you see that like horizontal bar i don't like those personally uh but the the pilot normally would be sitting here anyway so that should not be a problem but standard wise i think this interior this looks like a very well kept airplane uh, again you have all your analog screens for days which is in front of you uh, but then you also have this nice digital reader here so you don't necessarily have to stare at four or five different screens uh, for your engine you can just look here and you should have all the uh, data and information that you need again you look at that back seat although it's nice to look at <laughs> you may not have enough room to actually sit uh, four people in here and again once four adults are sitting and I'll turn the camera around again So you see once four adults are sitting in here um, It's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be the most comfortable and this airplane is vulnerable to CG limitations So again, I would say if you're looking at a Mooney for the most part You want to be flying with just you and one person again You can probably take kids or, or someone on the smaller size in this airplane, but to fit four standard american adults in this airplane will be a challenge just note that so we're gonna step back out and then i'm gonna give you some numbers on this airplane all right we are back out here and let's share some performance numbers because this is one of the most important factor that you will consider if you're looking to get into a mooney and speaking of if you are in the market for a mooney m20 or any airplane in this same category that you can compare this plane to Make sure you check out aeroavion.com. We do have the most updated listings for these types of legacy planes, used or brand new. Okay, so make sure you check out aeroavion.com. Now, back to the airplane. Performance wise, in numbers. Now, on paper, it says the Money M20 will cruise at 150 to 160 knots while burning, and I quote, 11 to 12 gallons an hour. Now, for this particular airplane, I talked to the pilot. And he says that he typically would plan for 135 knots, 135. So not 150, not 160, but 135 knots indicated. So depending on what the wind is doing, if you get a nice tailwind, this is a nice 200 knots airplane. But if the wind is pushing you the opposite direction, then you may be cruising at 110, 120 knots. But really, for this plane, you're cruising at 135 knots indicated. And with that, you're burning 12 gallons of fuel per hour. Now, your climb rate, you're doing about 1,000 feet per minute, which is pretty good for this airplane. And the fuel burn for your takeoff, I honestly don't know, but I will add that to the description. You do have a nice retractable landing gear. And I forgot to mention, I believe it's called the Johnson Bar uh, that comes with these uh, Mooney or the M20. Again, this bar is you basically push and pull. There's no electric switches or anything. Uh, with that is the benefit of having that is the fact that you're not vulnerable to a mechanical failure of some kind. Because again, you're just pulling the uh, the gear up. Okay, so you don't need to worry about electrical fa uh, failure or anything like that. So a lot of Moonies come with that, which is neat. Now, the most important question that a lot of people will ask is what is the price of this airplane? If you know anything about the aviation industry right now, prices have gone up. If you were looking at this airplane two years ago or right before the pandemic, you may have been able to find one for 60 grand, maybe even less. But right now to get into an M20 uh, that is a later model, which is what I consider this airplane, this is an 84 model, you're looking at $100,000 minimum. These airplanes now go for between 100 and $150,000. And I imagine that one that is well kept like this airplane and well equipped like this airplane will be on the higher end of the pricing point. So you may get lucky and find something for less than $100,000. Now, I do also think that if you're looking at a much older M20, say a 60s model, you probably find it cheaper. But for something that's newer like this plane, you're looking at $100,000 and more. Okay, 
that is all the data that I can provide to you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time, be sure to subscribe to the channel with the notification bell on. I greatly appreciate the support, guys. And make sure you check out Mojo Grip on Facebook. We are on Facebook, so make sure you check us out there. And as I said, if you're in the market for a Mooney, a Cherokee, a Cessna, any legacy airplane, check out airavion.com. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you on the next video.